Okay, this is a fairly straightforward question. We want to determine the value of the electric field strength at the dead center between two opposite charges. The charge on the right has a deficit of electrons, it's missing electrons, and therefore it is net positive, and its value is 70 microcoulombs. The charge on the left has an excess of electrons, and its charge is minus 45 microcoulombs. And we're trying to find the strength of the electric field right in the middle. Now, before we begin, I find most of my students, they can calculate it okay, but they're not quite clear exactly what they're trying to determine. What is it that they're actually calculating in the end? So before we begin, let's review. If I've got a negative charge and a positive charge on the right, there's field lines that exist between them. I'll pull up an image that's found in your tutorial so we can look at what those field lines look like between a negative and a positive. So here's the picture I pulled off our tutorials. So our blue positive charge is on the right and our negative charge is on the left. Now, in the tutorial, both charges were equal and opposite. That's not quite the case here. The one on the right has a stronger overall charge than the one on the left. But let's not worry about that right now. All we're looking at is the shape of the field lines between two opposite charges. And now we can see location P is right down the center. And you can see our field lines, when you go right down the center, go from right to left along a straight line. In other words, if I place a tiny little charge anywhere along that line, it'll move in a straight line either towards the left or towards the right, depending on whether or not that charge is positive or negative. So the field lines show us two things, the direction of the electric field at that point and the density tells us how strong the electric field is at that point. So we're right in the middle, we're trying to determine the overall strength of the electric field. We know it's going to be pointing to the left, we just got to figure out the value of it. So let's leave this here and look at our diagram now. We're right down the center line, let's see if we can figure out what the value of the electric field is. Now the electric field is due to two charges. So we've got an electric field being generated on the left by this negative charge, and we know that field lines always point towards negative. And there's also an electric field being generated by the blue positive charge on the right. Now, we're right in the center, so the distances are the same. We can see that the charge on the left is smaller in magnitude than the charge on the right. It's a smaller overall charge. So we would expect that the effects of the electric field due to the red charge are smaller than the electric field due to the blue charge, the positive charge on the right. So let's do it one at a time. I'm going to use a red arrow to represent the electric field as generated by the red charge, by the negative charge at point P. We know it always goes away from positive and towards negative. So at point P, it will look like this. So we'll call it E1 because that's charge 1. Now let's ignore the red side and look at the blue. Now blue is a positive charge and we're a certain distance away, 0.6 meters away. We know that the electric field always points directly away from positive. And because this is a bigger charge, it should be a bigger electric field. Let's sketch that in now. So our blue vector E2 is pointed away from our blue positive charge, always goes away from positive and towards negative. It's a longer vector than E1 because the charge is bigger in magnitude, it's 70 microcoulombs. So our net electric field as expected when I add those two vectors together tip to tail will be pointed towards the left as we have seen in this diagram below. So let's arrange our vectors now tip to tail and then all that's left is we have to solve them. So we see that when we arrange E2 plus E1 tip to tail, just like we normally do with vectors, we get a net electric field that is this black vector here pointed to the left. So to calculate it, all we need to do is figure out the value of E2 and the value of E1. Now I've got two basic equations for electric field. I've got my general equation, which is more of a definition. So this one works all of the time. And it basically says that the electric field is force per unit charge. So that one will work in any scenario. The bottom equation will work only if the charge that is creating the electric field is a point charge. And that's the scenario that we're encountering in this particular question. Both sides are spherical balls of charge, point charges. So we can use this equation to figure out the value of the electric field surrounding a point charge Q 
at a distance r. So let's do it one at a time. We'll start with E2. So plugging in the values for E2. Okay, Q2 over R squared, where R is 0.6 meters away. We're at point P. The value is 70 microcoulombs, so 70 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. And as always, K coulombs constant is 9 times 10 to the 9. And you work all that through, and you get E2 is 1.75 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb. Let's do a similar analysis now for the red E1 vector. So identical equations, the only thing that changes in this case is the value of the charge, which is 45 microcoulombs, or 45 times 10 to the negative 6. And in this case, you get a smaller value for the electric field as expected. E1 is 1.125 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb. So the only thing left to do is add them together to get my net electric field pointed to the left. So one more step, let's complete it. So our final value of our net electric field, E1 plus E2, tip to tail, is 2.88 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb, and it's directed towards the left.